Hello everybody and welcome to today's video from Nick Taylor Plumbing Limited. Today we're going to show you how to drain down a gravity fed uh, central heating system. So if you've got tanks in your loft, um, that's, a, that's a low pressure system. So here we've got two tanks, one's for your, your hot water and then the smaller one is for your central heating system. So we've got a couple of uh, simple steps uh, in order to do this. Uh, at the end, I'll do like a uh, draw or a diagram and explain it uh, that way as well, which is more uh, can be more helpful. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to turn the water off to this tank. Um, if we don't turn the water off, uh, we'll start draining the water out, and this 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 will just keep filling up with water. Uh, so it's a pointless exercise. So you turn the water off to this. You connect your drain off hose uh, downstairs at the lowest point to drain the central heating system. Once you've done that, you then open up the bleed valves on the higher level first. So you start upstairs, open the bleed valves to let air suck in. Then you go downstairs, open those, and it'll all drain out that, that hose. Uh, once you've done that, then you, then you can uh, make your adjustments on, the, on the, um, whatever pipe work that you need to do. Don't forget to turn your boiler off. Um, and then we'll talk about filling up shortly. So here goes. So now um, we've got this isolation valve just here take you in closer to that which feeds goes along and the pipe goes along and feeds this float valve so um, so I'm just going to turn that off um, like so we are now off uh, if you if you haven't got an isolation valve upstairs or, or on there uh, you need to go to the main stop tap turn the water off at the main stop tap to the whole house because uh, the water will from the stop tap Will uh, it'll go in many directions, but it will also come directly upstairs to this point here. So, so yes, just to reiterate, if you haven't got an isolation valve there, turn the main stop tap stop, stop tap off into the house. Now we've done that. We've going to uh, we've just opened the drain off valve that at the lowest point on the radiator. Uh, and we've connected our hose and it's draining off nicely into the drain which, which is exactly what we want. Okay so that's great so we've turned the water off here uh, for the feed and expansion tank we've opened the drain off we've connected our hose uh, and the water is now going outside this tank is starting to empty it's still half full uh, but it, more importantly it can't fill back up with water so we're going to wait around for five ten minutes wait for this tank to, to empty once it's empty, I'm then going to go to the highest radiator, so the upstairs radiator, open the bleed valve there. That will then lower the, the water in the house in the radiator system down, and I'll go on all the radiators upstairs. That will then keep draining that water down, and then I'll do exactly the same downstairs, and that, all that water will then, then go outside. If you open a bleed off downstairs first, what will happen is, water will start squirting out um, and that's just because you've got all the water in up, up, upstairs so uh, so yeah upstairs radiators first then downstairs and then once you're happy you can then start working on the pipe work it's always worthwhile just to check your drain it's still connected to the drain off uh, sometimes it can pop off and you don't want that to pop off uh, inside somebody's house uh, so you want to make sure just keep double checking that the water's going out safely um, until you're happy all the water has drained so now all the water is draining outside, um, I'm happy that the feed and expansion tank in the loft has got, is gone. It's empty so that water is slowly coming down. I then go to the first upstairs radiators. This is a towel radiator in one of the en suites so it's, it's at a higher point. So I'll open that up and you'll hear it in a moment sucking the air rather than squirting air out. So I'm not sure if you can hear that noise, but uh, that's sucking the air into the radiator. So that just confirms that the water is emptying and going outwards. So now I've done that, I'm going to go around all the other rads and um, up upstairs rads and uh, open those bleed valves. Um, give that a minute and then go downstairs and open those bleed valves. Okay, so now I've made the amendments uh, to the radiator, the central heating system. I've put the radiator on, which is great. Um, I'm now going to go around, turn all the bleed valves off, turn the drain off off downstairs, uh, make sure I'm happy with everything, make sure, double check I've turned all the bleed valves off, and then I'll go up, back up into the loft, turn the isolation valve on, 
and open up, open up that water so the water then starts to re-enter the system. Okay, so we have made all of our connections downstairs and we're ready to refill the central heating system. Before we do that, we just double check that all the uh, bleed valves and all the radiators downstairs, upstairs, everywhere is turned off. We've also checked, double checked our connections on the, the radiator that we've, or any adjustments we've made to the central heating system. Um, I've also left, key point here, I've turned the drain off valve off, uh, but I've left the hose connected. So the reason for that is once we fill up, and we've got to work quite quickly and if there is any leaks or if there's anything um, which we're not happy with we can quite simply run up here turn this isolation valve off open the drain off valve downstairs uh, and that way we'll minimize any any problems uh, but it, it's unlikely but it's always best to act on the uh, air on the side of caution so now i'm happy with everything quite simply i'm going to turn this isolation valve on if you've not got an isolation valve as mentioned earlier just turn your main stop tap back on and you'll see what happens in a second. So I'm going to turn that on. I mean, that, there's another job there. The float valve is not quite operating properly. We've got the water coming out of here, where it should be going up from the bottom. But I, I'll sort that, I'll, I'll do another video of that. Um, so that's filling up nicely. Now I'm going to go downstairs, uh, just double check that I'm happy with everything. There's no leaks. Give it five minutes, I'm gonna keep going around, keep checking. Uh, once I'm happy that there's no leaks, I'm gonna come back up the loft when this tank is full, and then when it's full, um, I'm gonna then start to open the, the bleed offs and fill the radiator system itself. Okay, so that's now coming to a stop. I've been round, I've ran round downstairs, checked all the radiators, uh, and I'm more than happy with it. Uh, something to, uh, which is really important, the tank beforehand was absolutely filthy. It's filled with rust and all the debris which builds up in your radiator system, and it comes up, up here. Um, so I've cleaned that out. If, now, if I didn't clean that out, when I filled that back up, all that rubbish really is gonna go back into the central heating system. And if you don't clean it out, what happens is it gets stuck in all the pipe work, especially an older system where the microbore pipe work is you know, only eight mil or 10 mil thick. Um, so it's really important to clean it out because you don't want to have to go around, uh, you know, your customer calls you back and you've got to, um, you know, you've got to mess around, waste a day trying to unblock something which could have been prevented so easily uh, by, by cleaning it out. Uh, I'll put a, a YouTube link uh, at the end of this so you can see how we do that. Okay, so now I'm bleeding the, uh, the air out of the radiators. Uh, on a gravity fed system, this can take yeah, a little bit of time, uh, kind of five minutes, something like that. Um, you need to start from downstairs, the downstairs radiator. If you think that air, you want the air rises, so if you can get the water down the bottom first, all the air will go to the top, so that will prevent or help prevent any air locks or anything like that in the pipe work. If um, you might not be able to hear it on the video, but there's um, it's making like a hissing noise. And that's just the water coming in. I got a bit of blue towel just to catch any any water when it comes out, and I'm ready to turn to turn the bleed valve off when that happens. If uh, if you find that noise stops and you can that you feel there's no water coming into the system, all that means is that the tank in the loft uh, it's just it's just out of water, depending on how big the house is and how quickly it's gone in. So um, so you just just turn the bleed valve off. Give it five minutes, let that tank fill back up, and then uh, just try again. It's as simple as that. And so you go around all the radiators, getting all the air out. Then you turn your boiler back on. You turn your central heating system on. You'll hear loads of glugs and air and that running around your system, um, which is which is normal. And then um, go around again to all the radiators, just. Uh, just to bleed any excess air out of the pipe work which hasn't gone out just yet and uh, it's always good practice to maybe you know an hour later to do to do that again just check for any air and that's it simple as that as you can see this is taking a bit of time if it was a pressurized system it would be a lot quicker than this but it's not it's a gravity fed system 
Okay, so we've uh, got all the air out of all the radiators. Uh, the field expansion tank, the water stopped now in here. So that tells me that the, the, the water has now risen all the way up to the top. Uh, and we're at the top here. So uh, all the radiators are full, which is great. Uh, I've turned the uh, boiler back on and I've put the heating on. Um, just want to make sure that all the, there's warmth in all the radiators um, and there's no air locks or anything like that. Um, you'll find that you need to just quickly go around and let any excess there. So you turn the boiler on, turn your central heating system on. Uh, once it's had a bit of time to circulate all that water around your system, any excess there will find the highest point. So just go around all the radiators again, o open them up just a little bit and make sure there's no air left in them. Um, and, that, and that's it. Okay, so here's a, uh, a diagram of what we've just worked with. So um, the first thing we had was an isolation valve up in the loft, which is just here, so we turn that off. But if we didn't have one of those, we turn the main stop tap off. So the main stop tap uh, into the house, that then goes up, also known as the rising main, all the way to the, to the loft. But it also tees off and goes to your kitchen, your, any downstairs toilets. Uh, upstairs to the uh, to the bathroom say all the way into the loft to the feed and expansion tank now what we want to do is we want to turn this isolation valve off so we turn it off there uh, we then go downstairs and find a drain off then connect our hose to it and we open the drain off so the water then starts to come out and go down the hose safely outside what happens then is the water in this tank will start to drain all the way down and it will get to the point to about here which is to the top of the upstairs radiators um, it then creates a vacuum the upstairs ra radiators create a vacuum so I then to open all the bleed valves upstairs that then lets air suck in and that vacuum is then displaced and all that water upstairs will go all the way down out of our hose down here to the next uh, top point of the downstairs radiators to the highest point so we're about here now and then again we open up our bleed offs that then lets the water suck in and then the water is displaced the vacuum is displaced and again goes out of our hose here so that is how you drain down um, then you make your amendments on your radiator wherever you tee into your pipe work and so on and then when you go to fill back up you turn your drain off off leave your hose on just in case uh, to, uh, just close all your bleed valves downstairs, upstairs. Make sure you're happy with everything. Double check visually, as well as uh, you know, tightening any nuts or anything else that you've done on any any alterations. Then you turn your water back on. You turn it on on the stop tap or the isolation valve upstairs, whichever you've you've done. That then means the feed and expansion tank starts to fill with water. Water will straight away start going down here to all the radiators up and down. At this point you want to run downstairs, just check that you're happy that there's no leaks and no water going everywhere. So that then, uh, once you're happy, that all that water will then start to go all the way up, fill up, all upstairs, fill up. And then this tank will then get full and then the, the float valve will stop. So that that will be full. From here you then go and open up the bleed valves. So the water, there'll be water in here. So the water level will be about there because the top half of that rad will be air. Open that bleed valve, the water level will eventually rise all the way up. You get a little spurt of water out there, quickly turn it off, catch it with a bit of paper towel, do it to all the downstairs radiators because air obviously rises. And then once you've done that, you go upstairs, you do the same upstairs, open all the bleed valves, water then will fill all the way up and any air should hopefully find its way back out and up here and that's what we've worked with today so there you have it so thanks for watching this short video i uh, hope you found it helpful and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe